Okay, welcome to this tutorial video. Now, this has been supplied to all the people who attended uh, the K Morgan shoot, and obviously you haven't got to do this, but you may learn something from it. You may want to use it, uh, and we'll go over a few different techniques that I use. There'll be a couple of videos. Uh, there will be one, more of a basic one, for, for people without a lot of experience. And there'll also be a more in-depth tutorial in the second video for those who want to take it a step further and do a bit more professional editing. Okay, so let's start off. And if you hear some tweetering going on in the background, that's my little birds. So I apologise for those. I'll get something thrown at them in a minute. What have I got? Sure. <laughs> okay, so here we go. First of all, we need to make a selection of K there. So what we're going to do first of all is go to our layers. So click on layers, right click on the background layer and duplicate the layer. Click on OK. And then we go to select on the menu and subject. Now this will try and select the subject. Uh, it will be partly successful and partly not, but it gives you a good starting point. And the tool that we're going to use to add and subtract from this selection that it's made, and it's not a bad selection there, it's quite good. But this is the important part, it's making sure you've got the perfect selection. Now, it won't select everything, little every strand of air, and I'm not going to go in some of the ways that Photoshop does that because I don't like them. Um, I'll go into to hair retouching in a different video, but some of the strands of air on there, not quite nice, but I haven't been selected. But using the tools at Photoshop House, I really don't like. They have changed. They seem to have got worse. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in, first of all, on the selection. So I'm just using the zoom tool. I've got a bit of hair missing there, so going to use this tool so this is the, the object selection tool you'll find that with the magic wand tool and the quick selection tool and um, when you use this the, there's different modes it's usually set to rectangle I prefer it to be on lasso I find that has a little bit more control and works out a little bit more successful um, and we've got these different buttons going along here on the options bar. You've got new selection. Now, if it was on that and you used to draw anywhere, it will basically get rid of the selection that's already there. So make sure that's not on. We want to add to the selection, which is the second button on the options bar. So we click on that. And you haven't got to be perfect at drawing or anything in this. You just basically go around roughly the area that's missing. And it will try and locate that area. and then. If it gets too much, we can go to subtract and we can make it subtract an area. And it's like a learning tool, it will eventually get what you want there. Now, little areas in between the fingers there, I'm not going to try and get with this tool, we'll do that at a later stage. We're looking at anything that really sticks out basically. So, I'm going to hold down the space bar. And doing that, you'll see the hand tool appears. So with the space bar down and keeping it down, you can move around the subject when you zoomed in, which is really handy. And then when you let go, it returns to the tool. So it has missed this area, so we need to make sure it's on Add to Selection on the Options bar. We click on there. And once again, we just go over this area. Keep doing it until it's got what you want. There you are. See, it sort of learns and, and keeps going uh, until it gets what it wants. In most cases, not every case. Sometimes you have to edit it a little bit more than that. And probably around the fingers. I'm just going to go around the fingers a little bit there. And then I'm going to zoom in on that. So... I'm using the zoom tool. Now you can see it's on minus actually, and I'm zooming in. If I drag the screen, we can zoom in. 
And that's the best thing to do in these cases. It just makes things a lot easier. Now, there's a little bit of the thumbnail missing there. Let's try that tool and just see if it'll add. And it does, you can see it does. And there's a little bit there in between the fingers. Let's just uh, go to subtract on there and we'll try that. And it's saying no, which, which I thought it would do. Uh, these little areas are really easy to put right with the standard lasso tool. So I'm going to click on the standard lasso tool. And these have got the same things on the options bar for adding and whatever. So we want to subtract in this case, and it's important that the feather is on zero. So make sure the feather is on zero. Zero px. And what we do is we draw freehand to select this. Now you might say, oh, now we've got to draw in, but let's zoom in a little bit closer, first of all. Make it easier, and then go back to the tool. If you just go to the edge and just draw a little bit at a time, like this, and keep adding, you'll find that it's quite easy. We're not quite used to using this tool, so I'm just going to go like that. But if you just add a little bit at a time, and then if you've gone over slightly, you can always go back and to the Add tool. So if we click on the Add Options tool on there, and we can just draw in anything that we've took out that we shouldn't have done, and that's plenty good enough. Uh, there's a little bit more, so we need to subtract that. There we go. Again, I'm holding down the space bar because I'm going to go around these parts and just make sure everything's looking okay and you can see we're missing a part there now again i'm going to click on i'm using a standard lasso tool now so i am clicked on add to selection and i can just draw around these areas and just keep adding a little bit on just a little bit at a time and then it makes it much easier to draw freehand if you just do little bits Okay, and we're coming into this area. You see, we've got an area there we need to get rid of, so we need to go to subtract. You say, well, this takes a long time, you know, I should be able to click something and it should do it straight away. It doesn't. <laughs> you do need to, if you want to, the perfect shot, take your time over it and make sure your selections are perfect. And this is the best way to do it. Now you can see we're, we're missing parts of the air. I'm not too worried about that as long as we've got a reasonable selection of what we want. We can, there's a little bit there I could add. So again, I've got the same tool on, add to selection. I'm just making sure I don't go over the edge on that so I don't pick up any other white. We'll just add that. I'm not too worried about the other bits. I say hair, I treat in a different way, but if there's anything really should be there, I can just add it. Bits of the ear sometimes. Just add these little bits, look. So just go in a little bit at a time. And we are really zoomed in on this. So see there's a bit of ear missing there, we can add that. So it's just going round, just touching up these little areas. Fine with that, it's not looking too bad, probably a little bit of a neck there. This area where the hair goes across. And we will look at that later. And we can put that right, that will be in the advanced one. So that's looking okay. It's usually where clothes sort of come into play onto the body sometimes miss. And we're looking good. Let's go down now to the feet. 
Oh, did it really zoom out? <coughs> from laser. Okay, that's looking okay. That area's looking okay. Looking okay here. This area where I'm worried. Okay, and you can see there we're picking up a little bit there. So let's go to subtract. And again, we'll just do a little bit at a time. If you use this method, it's so easy to use the lasso tool, and it just stops a lot of work. You can, you know, go there sweating, trying to get bits you want and don't want using other tools. But at the end of the day, the lasso tool does it much better. See, there's quite a large area, so we're still on subtract. We've been zoomed in so much, you know, it's just easy. There is no magic tool that gets exactly what you want, and unless you, you know, if you want the best, don't just say, oh, that'll do. Make a job of it. Take the time. And of course, you wouldn't do this with every photograph. We're just uh, using this one. To do this, a lot of the photos we took a K, you wouldn't have to do anything with. They look great straight out the camera. This one looks fine, but it's just learning a different technique. So now I'm adding. I'm going to keep that shadow there because that's. Uh, see these areas again. This is one where you can take your time and just do little bits at a time. I love the lasso tool. <laughs> I use it for so much. Uh, and it really is. If you use it this way, you, know, you don't have to be a great artist. Or steady with the hand, you just keep adding little bits. And I use it for so many other different things as well. It's the most used tool in my arsenal that I use. Okay, I think that's going to be good enough. I'm just going to double click the hand tool and take me out. Obviously, you can take more time, but I think we've got what we want there. So, having done that, and we've got our selection, and I say that is the time consuming part, making sure you've got the perfect selection, we can now add a mask to this. So, to do that, if we look down at our layers palette at the bottom there, we've got this little white square with a black circle in the middle that will put on our mask. So, remember the mask, and we can see the mask now there, the white area is. The area that we can see and the black area is the bit we've made transparent and using any tool that you can paint with like a brush or anything you can paint up areas back on or take them off using the brush just by simply painting white or black now if i just hide the layer below we can now see the selection that we've got so that's our starting point okay so now we've got that I'm going to click back on the bottom layer because what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add our background, our new background that we're going to put on there, which is a pink texture. So I will give you this file to download so you can use the same one. So I'm going to go to File Open and find the file. And clue where I put it. <laughs> where did I put it? Oh, there we go. Ballet Shoot Files. Yeah. There we go. So pink texture, which you've got the download link for. Now there's various ways of putting this onto here. I could go to edit, select all, uh, and then copy it and paste it. So that's one way. We'll use that way because that's probably the way people find the easiest. So we go to select all, edit, copy, go. Back to your other image by clicking on the tab, 
and then click edit paste now this file uh, is the same size as this image that I've got now it may not be on yours so if it isn't click on the move tool and you can resize it to make it fit basically so once you are click the little tick on the options bar and that will just complete the resizing and if we go onto our layers now we can see it's there now I want to protect this because we're going to play around um, with this background file we're going to do things to it so I'm going to right click and duplicate that layer and I'm going to probably name this so we don't get confused I'm going to double click on the name there and we'll call this pink back you can call it whatever you want but it just helps us reference which layer we need to be on okay so we've got that there now what i want to do with this i want to make it look like we've got a wall and a floor so the first thing we're going to do is to make an area darker so i'm going to get the rectangular marquee tool which is on the toolbar there top one of the choices if you hold your mouse down on these buttons you can see all the tools so you want the rectangular marquee tool and when you draw with this and it just make sure the feathers on um, actually we will put a little feather on this so I'm going to click in the feather option on the options bar there and I'm going to type in 20 and this will just give it a soft edge 20px and what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to draw, I'm holding down the mouse, so just across this area. Now if it isn't in the right place and you haven't let go of the mouse, you can hold down the space bar and you can move this around. So it helps you line up exactly where you want to put it. So I want it there and I'll come across. So remember that little tip, the space bar allows you to move the rectangle as you're drawing, as long as you keep the mouse button depressed. And then when we've done that, we simply go to our adjustment tool and we click on the curves. So adjustments, if you can't see that, go up to window on the menu. Anything that I say should be on the right hand side and you can't see it. Go to window and you will see adjustments and you can click on there and then you'll get this window up here. So I'm going to click on the curves and I'm going to go to the middle. And I'm going to bring that down just right there so it looks like we've got a bit of a floor there okay so we click and now if we look at our layers we can now see we've got this curves layer here now we can also use this to make a selection if I go onto this mask layer here, where you can see that it's already selected and we've got that white area, if I hold down Control or Command on the Mac, so I'm using a Mac, I'm going to hold down the Command key, you would hold down Control if you've got Windows PC, click and you'll see that you'll get a selection. And I'm going to use that because I'm going to go back to this pink background here and click there. Because what I want to do, that just looks like it's, you know, if we look at that white texture coming down the wall there, it doesn't look very good because, you know, it's just looks like we've darkened it like we have done. We haven't got a different surface here. So I want to make this look different. So we've used that selection so we can go to a filter and change that. Now I'm going to go to um, Blur. And I'm going to go to radial blur. Now, when the radial blur comes up, unfortunately, you would think that they would have uh, updated this so that you can actually see the preview actually working in the window, and they haven't. It's something where they've been a bit slow, and this hasn't changed since day one, basically, in Photoshop. So, on the zoom there, you've got spin, 
which gives this site's type of effect and you've got the zoom. I'm going to go to zoom and I'm going to drag it all the way up to 100% and click on OK. Now it won't have a big effect, but you can just see it's just blurred that and it now looks like we've got a different surface rather than just the wall that was going on. And then I can select, deselect, and that's what we've got. Okay, remember, but if I think the floor's now too dark, I can go back any time and go to this curves layer and click on there, and I can reduce that if I wanted to. So there's none. There's 100%, and I'll probably like it about there. So you can change the opacity down to what you like. So I've gone down to about 54%. Okay, so now I've got what I want, I'm going to right click on that, I'm going to merge it down, not anything else, so right click and merge down, and that will merge it down to the previous layer. So underneath that I've still got my other layer, should I need to get back to that and change things, it's still there. Okay, so we're getting there now, we're starting to, to get what we want. Things like adding shadow and that. Sometimes you can get away with using no shadow. You need something there in this case because it just looks a bit false. I'm going to show you different ways of making shadows. Um, and first thing you need to look at is where is the shadow? Well, the shadow is on the left hand side of the body. So if we create a shadow, we need it to be on this side. And the light is coming from the right. So that's the first thing to look at, because if you put a shadow on this side, it just doesn't look right. What well, first thing we're going to do is to put some dense shadow underneath the toes there. So to do that, I'm making sure I'm on this pink back layer, and I click on a new layer button there. So if you can see that's a little plus at the bottom of the layers palette, and I'm going to select this pink color now. I'm going to click on the colors there and I'm going to click on the palette to get the basic color. And what I'm going to do then, I'm going to do a dark version of that color. So I'm going to come down to about here, down towards black. So I've got a very, very dark browny color. That's the color I'm going to use for the shadow. I'm not going to use black, I'm going to use that brown. Now, when I've done that, I'm going to get a brush tool. And I'm going to make sure I've got a soft brush. And I can resize this brush. If you look at your keyboard, you've got your enter key or your return key. And to the left of that, you've got two parenthesis brackets or square brackets. And the one on the left, sorry, the one on the right will make it bigger. The one on the left will make it smaller. So I want to be much smaller. I'm going to use that to resize the brush. I just find that much quicker. And I'm just going to go under the foot there. And I'm going to do one click and then go to the other one and do one click just so we've got a bit of shadow there. And then I'm going to go onto the, the layer palette there so we can see our palette. And I'm just going to double click on that. I'm going to rename it. So you can double click on the name and rename it. So I'm going to call that Dense Toe Shadow. Just click outside to rename it and you can do different things with this you could simply take the opacity down a little bit just to something about like that it's looking okay so that's the first bit of shadow now for the second shadow we want the body shape so again I'm going to create a new layer I'm going to double click on that and give it a name. So I'm going to call it uh, Body Shadow. You don't have to do this, but I find it just when you're doing something a bit more complicated, it helps you remember the layers. And it's easy for me teaching to say, go to the body layer or go to the dense toe shadow or whatever. There we are. So once we've got that, I want a selection of the body. Now, 
the way I can do that is I can use this mask that's above. So I'm not clicking on this layer, I'm on this body shadow layer, but I'm going to hold down its command on the Mac or the control key on a Windows PC, and you go to here and you click on the mask above. And if you do that, we're still on the body shadow look, but you can see now we have made a selection. So you can use a mask to make a selection. And what I'm going to do with that is to colour this in with the colour we've selected. So I've got the paint bucket tool and I'm going to click. Now when you do that, it looks like it's done nothing because the shadow is beneath the image of okay, I'm just going to hide the layer but we've got that. Yeah. So we've got that shadow. Make a nice card, wouldn't you? That is, there you go. Okay, so we've, we've made that shadow. Now I take off the selection. Deselect. That's select, deselect. And now we've got this shadow. Now, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to click on the move tool and we're going to distort this. Now, first of all, I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to drag the shift key down. And then what I want to do is to move it slightly to the left. Now, to do that, I'm going to hold down. I think it's from control on the PC, it's command on the Mac. And you go to this middle one there, holding the key down. And if I drag to the left, I can make the shadow go to this side. And it's exactly where I want it. And I'm going to bring it right down here. Let's just do that as an example. Now you can see now that the toe is in the wrong area. So I'm going to hold down Command or Control on the PC, whichever you've got. I'm going to distort this corner and take that back up so that the shadow is beneath the toe. And then when I've got it in place, I'm going to press the Enter key. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the layer. I'm going to go to where it says normal on the layer modes. These are the layer modes in the layers palette. And I'm going to select soft light. And that makes it transparent as such. And I can also take down the opacity a little bit if I want to make it even lighter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and just blur it a little bit. I'm going to probably blur it just about, around about 20%, something like that. Click on OK. It's your choice to make. Let's just click on the hand tool now on the left hand side just to take everything off and see what we've got there. That's what we've got at the moment. Okay, what I want to create now is a little bit of a starburst effect um, going on underneath behind K down by a feet. So we've got like, like a floodlight effect coming down on the feet there. So to do that, again, I'm underneath the background copy layer, the one where we've got the mask on of K. And I'm going to click a new layer. Now let's just hide this top layer. So I'm going to click on the eye there and hide that so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to select the paint brush. I'm going to get a white brush. To change the colour to white for the foreground colour. Now I just need to see where K is, so I'm going to bring that back on now. I'm going to click once on the leg there. Once on the leg down here, like so, and again here under that foot, and again there on that foot. I'll do that twice. Just make those a bit denser by clicking twice in those positions. And then let's just have a look what we've got. I'm going to take off the top layer so you can see what I've got. Okay, so we've got these now. What I'm going to do with these is to blur these. So I'm going to go to filter, 
we want the radial blur like we had before. And again, you can't see the preview on this, it's a bit of a pain. So we want a zoom again, and I want it at 100%, and I'll click on OK. And then it will do the blur. Okay, it's not given what I want to do. I'm going to undo that. Okay, it's not going where I want it to go. So this is good that I've made that mistake because you, we can see now how we can tr control this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the rectangle tool. I'm just going to take off any feathers on there. So I'll make sure that's on zero on the options bar on the feather. I'm going to draw a rectangle. Again, you can use the space bar to move this around and get it in the right place. Okay, so now I've got the selectioning point. I'm going to do that again. Now, rather than do it again, it's probably remember the last thing that I've done. Let's just have a look. It's still got the radial blur there. So I can just go to there now and click on radial blur again. And you will now see that it's going out in a square format. And I'm going to do that a number of times. I'm just going to repeat that. So I'm going to go, keep doing it, radial blur. And we're going to do it lots of times just to keep that going. And once more. Okay, so now we're going to take off that selection. Now I'm going to go to the Move tool. And I'm going to resize this. Get this effect. And I'm going to distort it as well. So to distort it, I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to go to the edge. And I'm going to make it much wider. And bring it down at the top. So I'm keeping the shift key down to do that. Get it about there. Click the tick on the options bar. So you're learning lots of little tricks on this. Let's just bring K back. So I'm just going to click on the I there. And then I can use the shift key. Now I'm not on that layer. Make sure you're still on this layer. Just going to bring that down. Keep moving it up. Distort it. So that's roughly what I want. Click the tick. And then we can go to that layer. And if we want, we can just change the opacity down a little bit. It's something very slight, but I think it makes a difference. Okay. A little bit. I'm happy with that. And click on the hand tool just so we can see what we've got. So it just gives a, a little bit of an effect. Okay, now what I want to do now is to create some floorboards. <laughs> so I want a floorboard effect on this. So let's go back and click on this pink background there and create another layer just above that. So I'm going to click on there and what I want now is a dark colour so I'm going to click on the white box there on the colours and I'm going to select so I'm just going to click on the picture of the colour that I want so I want to be basically about that colour but a bit darker so I'm going to come down from that colour again to get a darker version of that and then I'm going to click on the paintbrush tool. I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to make these bigger than what we need. You'll see why. I'm going to click and I'm going to hold to about that position. And I'm going to use a hard brush. Let's just use a hard brush on this one. I'm going to click once there. I'm going to bring it down. I'm 
then click just going to do about that position so and then I'm going to spice it out a bit further trying to keep fairly straight click about there and then a bit further click there and then there okay so it's slightly wider on each one and then let's go to the layers okay so we're on that layer now now I'm just going to double click on the name there so foreboard effect now you don't have to do all of these things you don't have to do half of them you're learning different techniques and what I'm going to do with that is click on the move tool so the move tool is on the very top of the toolbar there and I'm going to distort this now so I'm going to hold down the shift key I'm going to go to the middle there and drag this and make it narrower I'm going to bring it up there and then I'm going to go to the edge and I'm going to hold down the shift key still I'm going to drag it this way and then I'm going to drag it that way So I've got that type of effect I'm going to press the enter key to merge it down okay so we're getting some advanced <laughs> techniques on here now and like I say you haven't got to do all this it's just there if you want to I'm going to take the opacity down a little bit so on the opacity of the layer I'm going to take that down and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to learn you another little trick now. If I put my mouse with, with this tool still on, so we've still got the move tool, I'll put it over this layer now. Okay, so we're, I'm going to hold down the option key. Now, if I drag with the option key down, and that could be the alt key on the PC, I think. Just try the different keys. So either alt or option on the Mac. And you will see when you press the right key, you will get this double triangle. When you've got that double triangle, you can drag it down and duplicate that layer. Now I'm going to do that like that. I'm going to get this so it's lining up level with that one. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold down the command or the control key on the PC. I'm going to drag that. And make this drag it down so we've still got this floorboard effect it's now getting bigger and then click the options on there okay so what we're going to do with those two now is to merge those two layers together so we've got uh, the floorboard effect copy and we've got the floorboard effect underneath making sure I'm on the top one right click and merge it down so they're all on the one layer now if I hide that you can see they're all now we can change things on here we can change the layer modes we could go to overlay or soft light just to give I'm going to use soft light I think so that's on the option on the layer mode options there just to give that little effect of the floorboard effect so now we've got that. Okay, and again, like I say, we you haven't got to do any of this. It's if you like the effect, you can use it. I mean, you could probably even overkeen on the shadow to be on the body shadow. You could do without that if you wanted to, but or we can take it down a little bit more. That's the effect. There we are. That looks a bit better. okay so there we have got the complete file now there's 
one thing I would probably do, and again, this is personal choice, making sure I'm below the top layer, I'll probably click on layer two there, and then create a new layer. So another new layer. And I'm going to click and select white to make sure you've got white for your foreground colour, whichever way you do that. Uh, and I'm going to get a brush. And I want a soft brush this time. I'm going to make this really large, just in this area. And I'm going to click once. Just give the highlight behind K. There, you could leave it like that, or you could take the opacity down, or you can change the layer mode again. So let's just try soft light. And I think soft light just gives a nice effect because you can't physically see it, but it is giving that nice, soft, light look behind that. There is something else you can also do. I can use the same technique. If I go to the very top layer now and select another new layer, I could do this over, see the dark area of the dress here? I would probably click once there, like this, and then I can change that to soft light. And can you see there that's just made this a bit more high key, give slightly more high key effect. I could even click down on the legs. And then you can take the opacity down just to lessen that effect a bit, but you can just then get the effect that you want. Go right up. It just takes that harshness off. It's almost like dodging and burning in some respects use that technique as well if you wanted to but I think it's just simpler and it works okay so there is the first video completed and hopefully you've learned a lot from that and in the second video we'll be using frequency separation to create just a few different editing effects on there